when I don't feel a piece, I don't touch a piece. If a client says they want X, and I'm just not feeling it that day, I, I don't touch it because I'm not gonna be, it's not gonna be my heart and soul, so I can go do something different. In basketball, that's not necessarily the case. You just have to go play basketball. There's a kid named Rusty Fuller that went to my high school, and he's a skateboarder in a small town in Texas. And I lived on the east side of Walks Hatch, which was all black basically and pretty violent, but we became friends just through school. I thought he was cool. So I watched him draw on his book covers when we used to take the old paper sack, cover our books, and watch him draw. And then he started teaching me at a half pike in his backyard. He started teaching me how to skate. I got into skating. I would watch him draw and paint on the bottom of the skateboard. I was like, man, this dude's super talented. It just went from that to we ended up in some of the same art classes. But he was really, really good. And I just was competitive, so I wanted to be like him or as good. So I started taking more classes and I had a talent for it and then I started taking sculpting and like before you know it was just like one class after the next class. I went into college, the only athlete in my art classes. And um, yeah, just after that man, just kind of like continued to just. Welcome back. It seems Desmond Mason is constantly working on his stroke. Now this is a guy who's trying to develop and trying to adjust to Division I basketball after piling up all American honors in high school. But it's the canvas stroke that keeps him busy when he's not in the gym. I think this is my best drawing. Um, this was created, we had to uh, pick out any kind of character or any kind of, uh, just any kind of object and we had to draw a graph. And by graphing it, it helps keep everything in proportion keeps everything, um, you know, the head is not bigger than the body or things like that. And um, helps you shave more and helps you get just the right detail. And I think um, Mark helped me a lot out on things like the face because I wasn't, uh, back in high school, I really didn't draw a lot of portraits or things like that. And um, he helped me out on that, but everything else I just kind of fell into and got down with the flow. And he taught me about, um, cloth and clothing and the wrinkles in clothing and how to shade, that kind of stuff. And I think this turned out to be one of my best drawings ever. I'm the type of person where I put a lot of pressure on myself and coach, t I mean, coach always tells me, you know, you can't do that to yourself. I mean, it makes everything worse. So, I mean, I gotta learn to mature more to not put that much pressure on myself because I gotta really come to think that I am just a freshman, I mean, you know. Th those kind of things happen, those mistakes happen. Uh, those are freshman mistakes, I mean, like everyone says. But I mean, um, eventually it'll be all right. <laughs> He's a wonderful young man. He really has a talent when it comes to uh, drawing. Uh, you know, they, uh, the one uh, drawing that you kept going back to, that I thought that looked just like Michael Jordan. Well, it did. It was amazing when we saw it up close. Uh, and again, he kind of took it, uh, he brushed it off as saying, well, it wasn't that big a deal. It was a big deal for me. I could hardly write my name on a piece of paper. I think he ended up making a B in the class, and he was really disappointed because he thought he was going to make an A. But he's got a chance to be a great basketball player. The NBA wasn't even a thought process for me. I was going to school for an occupation. Like I, I was good, but I, I don't think I'm NBA good. So I didn't really think about it like that. I'm like, okay, what's, what's my next step? I was working every day so hard at basketball. I didn't want to have to do that and then go crunch numbers. I couldn't see myself going into a cubicle and doing the same thing. So I was like, what's, what do I love? <clears throat> and, and art was always, I would always say it's my first love. It was always my first love. That was, that, was, that was the door that opened up for me. Just coming to the NBA, I never really had it easy. I was told I wasn't going to play. David Stern told my agent, there's no way he deserves to be in the green room. They didn't invite me. I was drafted. There were still two or three guys in that green room. I've never been cut, but I was traded. I fought for every minute I ever had. I worked my butt off. Same thing in college. I sat on the bench as a freshman, same thing in NBA. I sat on the bench behind guys. I felt like I could have been playing more minutes. Uh, but when I got my opportunity, I think I really seized that. So I was all, there's always been kind of a back against the wall in basketball. Um, but when you're 6'6", when six, six and you can pretty much jump from anywhere and you got really long arms and you play defense, which guys weren't necessarily doing a lot. It was more about scoring. And you did all the little stuff as a pretty smaller guy and you guarded all the big dogs. It was great because I became a fan favorite in every city I ever played in. 
Gotta hurry. It takes a toll on you, you know. Even in college, you did with travel and practices and games and studying film and, and scouting reports. In the NBA, for the most part, you're talking three times the schedule. It takes a mental and physical toll on you more than people think. It is a not beautiful side about it because it just wears you down. Um, so you need something else to go to. And for me, it was. It was art and people, man, oh, that's, that's weird that you're an artist and an athlete. And I'm like, well, not really. It's, they kind of go hand in hand. The creativity side of it, the spontaneity, the discipline. Also being able to, to shift on a dime. In art, you can't get stuck. You have a bad stretch of games. You gotta find your way out of it, but it's no different than a writer's block or artist's block. You gotta study, you gotta, practice, you got to find your way out of it. And so I think a lot of people don't see them as the same, but I remember I had a conversation with David Stern. I don't know if you know this, David, I said, but how much creativity and artistic ability goes into just the production of one basketball game, let alone the whole entire season? Videographers, photographers, dance choreographers, the design of the arena, the music, the lighting, the game itself, the ball with dribbling, the, the jerseys they're wearing. Literally, there's not a lot of things that go on in a 48-minute game that wasn't created by artistic minds in some capacity. And uh, it was a little blown away by that, but I think the arts really gives everybody an escape from whatever your normal life is. Yeah, I think you gotta have something else to go to. And in basketball, it's, it's it's like any job, because you know, as much for everybody that comes and watches it, it's entertainment, for us it's a job, right? I mean, you think, uh, and I don't know the exact numbers, like you got 75 years of basketball, what, 4,800 guys in history have played in a 75 year span. It's, it's an elite sport that takes a toll on your body that you have to show up every day or you just don't have a job. And, and that's just the way it is. And so there's days that you do not want to be there. There's days that it hurts and you're sore. There's a difference between being injured and being hurt. And there's days that it just hurts, man. You just don't feel like doing it. Mentally, you're not there. You know, your kid's sick at home, got the flu, whatever it is. It's just a lot of things that you have to shelf to come do your job. I made a conscious decision to step away from basketball because I was starting to lose a passion for that. And I'm, my, my passion for art continued to grow. And when I decided that I was done playing basketball, I didn't watch basketball for a couple of years. I wasn't around basketball for a couple of years. I just said, how do I now take what I've already kind of built over the course of a nine year span of exhibiting and shows and selling, what's my next step? And I sat down, I spent about four or five months planning the steps and then Boom, I hit the turn of the year and I just put, I activated them all. And I did it 100%. I was in the studio 10, 12 hours a day, trying to create. And when I got blocked, I wrote down next steps, who I can partner with, collaborations. And then when I was ready again, I was back in the studio. You know, that's just kind of the way I, I started to move that scale from basketball, full throttle, to slowly getting out of basketball into art, to just like full throttle artwork. In art, being a black artist and an ex-athlete trying to break into a predominantly white space was not very easy. The art world doesn't play. Like, it's not like the NBA. You can just be fast and run and jump and somebody, somebody's gonna find some time for you somewhere, whether it be here or Europe. But in the world of artwork, I was kind of a gimmick in their eyes especially when I started exhibiting at Basel. And it's like, ah, oh, it's just this dude. And the only people that are buying are people that are ex-basketball fans of his or, you know, things along those lines. So I had to prove myself, and it happened fairly quickly um, because no one's buying $15,000, $20,000 paintings 
because I used to dunk the basketball. You know, you, you have to have something that they say, we believe in the future of what he's doing, no different than when they give you a contract in the NBA. They're banking on your future. It, wa it was not easy. The artwork was way harder to crack than, than NBA. NBA to me was, I did it since I was five. And I knew my role and I just tried to be the best at that. Art, my slogan is you evolve or you dissolve. You gotta keep up. Like, and if you don't, we'll see you. You're done. People can put you in a box and you can choose to put yourself in a box. Somebody can put you in a box, but you just kind of kick a wall down and walk out of the box. It's up to you which direction you're gonna go in. But when you decide to go there, you put in years of preparation in, in your craft and then you can't walk in there and then be ticked off that it didn't work out for you when you didn't put the work in. So I, I always think that's, that's important for me. Man, I can't complain because I'm very blessed and fortunate to have done two things that I would have probably did for free as occupations and be able to do them at the highest level to take off. I, I just, I loved it. I just didn't, no one did it on my town. Nobody in my family did it. No one did it on my side of town. So I kind of like got tapped into that talent through this skater kid when we was going to school together. That's kind of how I got into it. So I always text, he's on Facebook and I always hit him up. And I'm like, Rusty, man, like, bro, you the reason I'm really doing what I'm doing right now, artistically. I'm not saying I didn't have a talent, but I probably wouldn't able to tap into it if I wasn't like, I didn't think you were cool. Draw two lines. You're gonna have preparation, you know, trial and error, all these things, but the one thing that's gonna cross is gonna be creativity. How creative are you? Because that's what's gonna allow success, right? You have to be able to find your own way. And you can knock off, and I say knock off, you can be inspired. In the art world, it's hard for people to accept that, but you can be inspired by Basquiat and, and Picasso and Jackson Pollock and all these guys. But you find a way to make it yours, just like Kobe shot a fadeaway with his tongue out. Or we also are wearing short socks and baggy shorts, or guys start going bald head. We know who, who inspired us. And so you can take that, but you have to find a way to make it your own because there's only one of those guys. And um, so, but I think that intersection is creativity. How do you take your craft and make it yours?